and a warm welcome back to you all. Thank you so much for staying with us this evening. While we are still in studio, continuing our conversation, of course, taking a closer look at the crisis in Zimbabwe and perhaps what actually can be done in hopes of bettering the situation in that country. I'm still joined in studio by political analyst Mr. Mutuma Mawere as well as Zimbabwe Solidarity Forums, um, Mr. Munjozi Mutandiri. Well, gentlemen, let's just take off where we actually left. And my question just before we went to the break was, how long can Zimbabweans be patient? Everybody's saying we're working on the situation, we're trying to better the situation. But realistically speaking, with a, a health system that's crashing, with an economy that's barely, you know, surviving, and people with a grim picture that Mr. Mutandiri just painted, that basic services for people in Zimbabwe is not met. Mr. Mawere, how long can Zimbabweans be actually patient for? You see, the human spirit has no time limit. But you say, how long? Because there are a lot of dynamics that take place under difficult conditions. But how long can foolish policies last? Foolishness must have a time limit because it is a cost. There are foolish policies. Imagine you export gold today. You realize a thousand dollars, you take it to Zimbabwe. You are forced to surrender that money and get the equivalent in a currency that is illiquid. You can't buy anything. Mm. Those policies have to change. But the problem with the clutter in Zimbabwe, there are some people who are saying legitimacy is the problem. And they believe that the government is ZANU-PF. It's the government of the people of Zimbabwe. So if a government ceases to serve its purpose, people must come together to remove or abolish it. Imagine the purse is bleeding and somebody... You know how many candidates uh, want to be president in Zimbabwe? The last election, there were 23 characters who all want to be president of a comatose economy. So everybody is focusing on the politics of Zimbabwe rather than the economy. People whose lives are affected by the decisions that are made without their consent. So the consent is a problem. Zimbabwe has been bleeding. Mugabe was a bad person in terms of ideas. But nobody could remind him what time it was. For 37 years, he thought he was leading a nation of progressive people. Mm. But the economy was sinking. And the people who were spectators of Vuvuzelas for him are the same people now who are in charge without Mugabe. So the, what held this uh, 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 magic of uh, uh, foolishness is no longer there. So each one is pursuing their own foolishness. So the economic policy of Zimbabwe uh, does And now, so, Mr. Mutandere, do you think that then it is possible to then achieve dealing with the problem of, you know, political turmoil in the country? So, so I think that uh, Zimbabweans must uh, find common ground uh, in the long term in terms of uh, having a sustainable solution. But in terms of uh, the questions of what is to be done now, for me, I look at uh, the immediate things that we should do to slow down or at least halt the crisis. Uh, all the hospitals in Zim are closed. The government has fired in the past two weeks 435 doctors. Today, yesterday the minister announced that we have fired 435 doctors. And this is a country that doesn't have a lot of doctors, by the way. Now we are having women giving birth in Mpare, in a backhouse. 
being midwived by an untrained person who is just a helping. And the president's wife has the guts to bring some groceries to Mbari to say to that lady, thank you, when hospitals are... put down their tools because they are no gloves. People are having to wear uh, plastics to deal with patients. That's the kind of the crisis that we're having in Zimbabwe. So what, what must we do? The United Nations uh, has a country director, country coordinator. We are happy that there is a new guy who is coming in now. Surely they seem to be out of touch with reality and they cannot continue to see these things unfolding without saying it out. Because remember, Zimbabwe signed to the Millennium Development Goals, and Zimbabwe cannot achieve those goals on its own. It needs the UN to step in. That's why I make a call that for me, SADC cannot continue to watch. So, so now perhaps we need, come so back now to... perhaps we need a, a, you know, a short-term solution with regards to mitigating you know, the current crisis happening on the actual ground. How do we no, do no, that? No, 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 not, but, uh, not but, uh, just short-term. Uh, we, we have had short-term solutions mm. for too long. Mm. I'm saying let's find solutions to mitigate the crisis as we solve the bigger problems that we have. But, uh, but and, uh, and, and if Mr. you don't have a consensus, let's say you go to a doctor and you don't feel you are sick, what is the doctor to do? At the present moment, if you were to invade President Nanga, if he was a problem, it's mind, what would you find? He has all the explanations of why Zimbabwe, including people in the opposition, he would argue that how can I build a nation when the people are dividing it? So there is no consensus. Mm. If there was one simple issue that we could agree upon, where you say the exclusion, let's say you say the president is not fit for purpose. Let's say that was an mm. argument. Some people are raising legitimacy. Then I need facts to demonstrate that he's not fit for purpose. So even the tre treason... Impeachment. In Zimbabwe, we are talking about Mugabe was pontificating in government, sleeping at meetings. Mm. No Sadek head of state could say, my brother, it's time to go. And now, apart from Sadek, how would you then describe uh, the global community's reaction towards what is then happening? Would you say perhaps there's some sort of resistance with regards to providing assistance? So, so I think that uh, with all due respect, Sadek, we have said already, it has acted before. Uh, it birthed an inclusive government which tried to build consensus. And we are not saying that Sadak should represent the people of Zimbabwe, but Sadak is a body that the people of this region say, do we want to build and define the kind of a region we want to see? Now, what is Zimbabwe? We are talking of 7.5 million hungry. Mm -hmm. Three billion dollars is unaccounted because of the militarization of agriculture, the agricultural government program. And after you have done that, the people that are hungry, the 4.7.5 we're talking about, 2.5, by the way, are in towns. The other, six, the other 5 million is in rural areas. In the same rural areas, we are seeing ZANPF MPs from the president's party declaring with food aid behind them that if you are an MDC supporter, you are not going to get the food aid. And this is where I'm saying that these things are not about uh, fundamentals or the issues of mm. establishing consensus. It's about right and... Sentiments on that. And, and you know I think what... Let's, let's forget about Sadek. When, a uh, yeah, few years ago, when the Sadek tribunal ruled against Zimbabwe on the land reform issue,
South Africa mm. as part of two. And our, and our gentlemen, due to time constraints, I really, and, and, and this is one question yeah. that I actually yeah. want you to ask you, you know, as much as we're trying to identify Sadiq's role and whether or not, you know, they are, you know, stepping up to the table or not, but then, you know, my question is, what about the global community? The global community is steadfast. They're saying that Please, the target sanctions will be removed when the people in government start positively reforming what they can, what is within their control. Instead, people are arranging demonstrations to say we don't want to comply. Mm. That kind of attitude does not lead you anywhere. Imagine you are poor on your knees and your pride. He who pays the piper calls the tune. So if I know I need assistance, I should be able to know where the money is and smell it and follow it. But instead, there are some people in Zimbabwe who believe that these sanctions are imposed because of the land reform program, not because of mischief. When you mm. introduce a currency and you, the currency in itself is theft of private property, imagine you have a savings of 10,000 rand and you are now forced to convert that 10,000 into Zimbabwe dollars. I actually want to ask a closing question because we're almost out of time, yeah. but I actually want to ask now as a closing question to both of you, but of course I'll start with you, yeah. Mr. Mutandiri. Do you think that there's, you know, there's proper austerity measures in place right now from the current government and are they helping in the interim? I, I think they are helping the government loot more. They are not helping ordinary Zimbabweans. That's quite clear. When Mtulin Mu at some point was announcing that we're having a government surplus, what kind of a minister announces a government surplus when in hospital there are no bandages, there are no anything? But in closing, I think that it is quite uh, important to emphasize here that uh, when Sadak took the call uh, to say sanctions must be lifted, for me, it is an entry point into the Zimbabwean crisis. Sadak must then understand, which I'm happy with what Minister Pandon I quickly, I quickly want to, I have to interrupt you because I quickly want to get okay. your closing remarks on the issue. No country ever develops because of the choices and actions of government people. Mm. Any progressive nation requires private people to underpin it. In this case, you have a small government where people are looking up to for solutions. It's a crazy thing. That all we are talking about, government, mm. government, government. Well, gentlemen, let's actually leave it there for now. I really hope that indeed we had, you know, quite more time to actually look at this, you know, issue quite more closely. But that was political analyst Mr. Mutuma Mwawere, as well as Zimbabwe Solidarity Forum Mr. Munjonzi Mutandiri, of course, placing Zimbabwe under the spotlight and perhaps looking exactly what the problem may be in that country and possible solutions in you know, in hopes of actually bettering the situation for the actual citizens on the ground. On that note, now it's time now to take a short break. We return at the top of the hour with more news and updates. Stay tuned to Newsworld.